Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos and welcome to Magmarax Heroic Raid Testing uh, footage here. So this boss is a, uh, it's pretty mid to late in the raid. It's I think going to be like 7th or 6th that you fight out of the 9 bosses uh, in the raid. It's in this big lava chain thing in the middle of the place that you can jump down to, so uh, it's pretty cool. And it has pretty, it's pretty single target. DPS race vibes. Uh, so there's a few different mechanics going on here. First of all, the boss is building up energy slowly. When the boss reaches 100 energy, it starts pulsing big damage to everybody and wipes you pretty quick. So uh, that's an, an enrage in the fight. The boss also gains energy faster if he stands in this magma ground, the ground that's being created. Now this ground gets created in a few different ways. There are swirlies that will spawn in this raid size two random ground puddles, and also Spittle, that in this raid size targets three people, it puts a circle on them, and they, here it is, the Molten Spittle, uh, and these people will now drop the Void Zones or the Fire Zones. So our strategy that we killed this with was to mostly just place those Void Zones all on one side of the room, and the thing about those zones is that they grow slowly in size, so you, we were kind of just kiting away from that side of the room. Uh, and getting towards the other side. Now, sometimes the random swirlies that just go in random locations like this would go in a bad spot. So what you can do with this is you can actually soak these circles and make them smaller. Uh, as you start soaking, you start gaining stacks of a fire dot uh, that is kind of nasty. And uh, you see here I have seven stacks of that. That debuff is interesting as well because the more stacks of it you have, the less effective you are at soaking the circles. So the less smaller they get per second that you're standing in there. So if 20 people all go and stand in the circle once, it's it gets really small. But you can see here I'm in this. Uh, and when I was in this by myself with nine stacks already, let's, let's go back and watch this here. Uh, so you see I already have seven stacks of debuff. I go in, eight stacks, nine stacks. And at nine stacks, I'm not even shrinking this puddle anymore. We need other people to come in that don't have stacks to be able to effectively sink it. Uh, so that's that is how that mechanic works. It's designed to keep you from just having from being able to easily soak them all, and it means that I think that if everybody's kind of looking at their debuff and whenever they don't have stacks is soaking and clearing them, uh, that can be a really effective way to mitigate that mechanic. Now there's another mechanic that comes out called the stomp, which I think we're about to see soonish. We'll see. Uh, and the stomp is kind of nasty because it often overlaps. Okay, we don't we don't see one here, but there are stomps that knock everybody back away from the boss, and it pretty much always overlaps with three people dropping spittle as well. Uh, and there's also this blazing breath frontal, and there's also a tank mechanic that it's like a triple attack on the tank that uh, this incinerating maws thing does three dam three attacks. It puts a fire dot on you and increases the damage you take from future ones. So you get you just trade off on every time this happens. So here it comes. Here's the stomp. Uh, so this is you see people are dropping their things and then getting stomped, and uh, everybody's trying to use a movement effect, but some people aren't able to do that, uh, and some people are getting killed by that, getting knocked into the middle of the room. Because the middle of the room, it looks like it's just regular fire, but there's actually like 30 puddles overlapping each other in the middle of the room by this point. So if you walk in the middle of the room, you're going to get a lot of stacks really quickly because the because of the way that it's it actually works. Um, a few other things we tested about this boss. You can drop the circles out in the lava. That actually does work. Uh, and you won't even get a stack from dropping them, but you'll take quite a bit of damage from the lava from doing it. Uh, so that is something that does work. Here you can see me, again, turning off my UI to get a beautiful cinematic screenshot for the, uh, for the thumbnail. So that's where that came from, probably. Uh, and yeah, other than that, you can see we were just kind of now cornered at the edge of the room here. Uh, we could have soaked more of this room, but there's kind of two different resources that you're you're balancing here, right? Which is space in the room on the one hand versus damage on the raid in the other hand. Uh, and you want to make sure you're using all of it. You can also use these chains here. You can see these chains. You can actually get knocked into them on the stomps uh, and potentially use that to stop your knockback. So uh, particularly at the end of the fight, that might be the way to deal with like the last stomp of the fight. You can also see we've got a debuff without a duration on everybody that is stacking up, ramping up in intensity in the raid damage here too. So the raid damage is actually very nasty at this point. We do have a Holy Priest abuser uh, keeping everybody alive right now, but that is unlikely to make it to live in its current state. So uh, not something that will probably be able to make the healing quite as easy as, a, as it was here. And yeah, here was this nasty stomp right at the end, right? Uh, and you can see the boss is also fairly high energy, almost 100 energy. 100 energy is the like where it starts enraging. It doesn't instantly one-shot everybody, but it does. Uh, that is the point where the fight gets really nasty. But 
That was Magmarax. Hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a pretty cool fight, I think. I think it's uh, it's pretty neat. A lot of fights this tier are sort of sort of having this sort of single target with, you know, a damage check and not too many complicated mechanics vibe about them. Like a lot of Sludge Fisty type fights this tier, but maybe with a little bit less intensity than Sludge Fist as well. So we'll see how it all works out. Of course, it's PTR, so the tuning of the numbers of everything that you see here can hugely change and often does. And fights feel very different. Uh, if they have, if one ability goes from hurting to not hurting or vice versa. So uh, we'll see how they decide to, to tune this thing. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.